How many times have you heard that the iPad Pro isn't going to replace your laptop or it isn't for real work? You've probably heard this quite a bit recently with the release of the latest 11 inch and 12.9 inch iPad Pros. And the people that say this really do bother me because I really think they're missing an important part of the iPad Pro story. Now don't get me wrong, I don't think the iPad Pro is the perfect device. I do want a lot of improvements to be made, especially to the software with iOS 13. But there are some merits for the iPad Pro being a pro machine and for people using it for their everyday work. And I wanted to cover those use cases in this video, be part of this conversation if the iPad Pro can replace a laptop. And I also wanted to throw in my two cents on what I would like to see added to the iPad Pro software that might make it a more pro machine. So let's cover some of the basics of the iPad Pro on why it is a pro machine. And that really starts with the hardware of this device. The hardware on the iPad Pro is some of the best hardware I've ever held in my hands. It has Apple Apple's own custom silicon in it, an A12X chip. It's even more powerful than the entry-level 15-inch MacBook Pro. A fun fact about that A12X chip is that it's more powerful than the Surface Studio 2, the freshly released Surface Studio 2 by Microsoft. And that is a $3,500 all-in-one PC. And I know it's not exactly fair to compare the Surface Studio Geekbench scores with the iPad Pro Geekbench scores, but it is amazing that it's even in the same category and that the iPad Pro is outscoring a desktop that costs $3,500. Battery life on both of those devices is about 10 hours and you could just put these in a bag, take them with you anywhere, which aside from doing pro level tasks, the fact that it's so easy to take these iPad Pros, put them in a bag, take them with you wherever you go, to have them be that portable is a really powerful feature. People often forget how much portability plays a part in how much you want to use your machine. If your machine's weighing four to five pounds, Maybe you don't throw it in your bag every day, but if you're taking an iPad Pro, an 11 inch one, for example, like I have, it's not gonna take that much time to just throw that one pound thing in the bag. You're probably not gonna feel it if you're carrying it around with you all day. And on a 15 inch laptop, that's something that if you're carrying it in a bag all day, you might go, well, I'm not gonna bring it with me. And then when you have inspiration, when you have a free moment, you're not gonna take it out of your laptop bag. You're not gonna be using that 15 inch laptop, but if you have that iPad Pro with you and you need to get something done, if you have 30 minutes of free time, you can be doing a lot of work that you normally wouldn't get done because you didn't bring the heavier device with you. Another important thing that makes the iPad Pro a really great machine for pro use is that color accurate screen. Apple has always been one of the industry leading standards when it comes to color accuracy in its LCD screens and the iPad Pro is no exception. We've often seen this in Apple's Mac lines, whether it be the iMac or say a MacBook Pro. And just having that color accuracy is really important when you're doing photo and video editing. I also really like the addition of the USB-C port to the iPad pros this year i really think that will enable a lot of future pro use down the line but for now you can connect audio interfaces to it you can connect external monitors up to 5k fortunately you can't do external hard drives yet and i'm not sure if that is a limitation of what is currently available in ios and maybe that'll be addressed in ios 13 or maybe it's Apple's strategy, maybe that's Apple's vision that we'll all be using cloud storage and to actually add on an external USB-C drive is just not part of their vision. For me, if I use the iPad Pro for video editing, I would definitely like the ability to add an external drive. I usually edit most of my videos off of external drives just because the video files are so big. So that is one of the software improvements I'd like to see. I believe the iPad Pro is capable of showing it. It has the files app, so why not add external drive support to the iPad Pro? Now all of that sounds good in how you might use an iPad Pro for pro use. Now where most people and most of this falls apart for a lot of people is the fact that the iPad Pro has no pointer support, whether that be a touchpad or a mouse. And for the people that have grown up with a mouse, especially all these years, not having a text selection tool with their mouse, not being able to edit videos, not being able to use a pointer for more precise text selection, that can trip up a lot of people. Now I've shown you in the past that iOS does have ways to do text selection by dragging two fingers across the screen, but that is a new methodology of doing things. A lot of older pros, a lot of people who have been using laptops and Macs for years aren't used to the way that you operate some of those finer details on an iPad Pro. For an example, on an iPad Pro, you could take those two fingers, drag them across the screen and get your text selector tool, where some people would just want a mouse and keyboard to move that text selector around. I know for me personally, I'd really like to see the ability to hook up an iPad Pro to the external monitor with that new USB-C port, and then from there have the external monitor have a trackpad and a keyboard 
And from there, you could move a cursor around and use the 5K external monitor, almost like a full desktop computer. That might go against Apple's vision of the future of the iPad Pro, but I really think they might wanna make a concession there because it might win a lot of people over if they're able to take this super portable iPad around with them. When they get home, they just plug it into an external monitor like the one behind me, have their mouse and keyboard already set up, and maybe load a different version of iOS that's more optimized for mouse and keyboard support, and then have all those programs ready to go, ready to use that mouse and keyboard, like LumaFusion, maybe add Final Cut Pro to the iPad Pro, those would be some really interesting takes. So the title of this video is that the iPad Pro can replace your laptop. And from the beginning, I wanted to give you some instances where I like the iPad Pro's hardware and software and some areas where I don't like the iPad Pro's hardware and software. But for this portion of the video, I wanna cover some uses where the iPad Pro is most definitely capable of replacing some Pro workflows. I think the number one area, if you wanna get an iPad Pro, and this is probably the strongest asset of the iPad Pro, is digital art. The iPad Pro is basically made for this task with the inclusion of the Apple Pencil. And especially on the new Pros, the latency on the Apple Pencil is ridiculously low. So as soon as you touch the tip of the pencil to the iPad, you're instantly seeing what you're drawing. The apps on the iPad Pro to get started drawing are really inexpensive. I think that's a feature that a lot of reviewers don't give enough credit to the iPad Pro for. You could buy some really inexpensive apps like Procreate, Clip Studio Paint, and you can even get some free apps like Medibank Paint that are really, really helpful for digital artists. And I'm also a real big fan of the Affinity Photo app. And although I'm not a graphic designer or I'm not an illustrator, there is a program called Affinity Designer, and that is a really, really well done program, exactly the same program that you would find on the desktop Mac version, and it's only $20. And if you're coming from something where you're used to paying Adobe $10 or $50 a month to get their full suite of programs, Having a program that you can just pay $20 for once and have it work with your iPad Pro is really, really inexpensive. We've seen examples of artists using the iPad Pro to make amazing art even day. Even things like the Stranger Things poster was made on an iPad Pro. And if the artist for Stranger Things is making a poster on the iPad Pro, I think that's pretty much real work for me. Another great use case, and I can speak to this a little more personally, is photo editing on the iPad Pro. That A12X chip is really, really powerful, makes for editing photos really quick. You can even process raw photos with relative ease. The touch screen is just great for manipulating the photo, zooming in and out really quick by pinching to zooming, using the Apple Pencil to add some clarity to some areas, using it to recolor some areas, or just some light retouches is a really natural experience. And again, some really, really awesome apps on the iPad Pro that are pretty inexpensive, apps like Pixelmator, apps like Affinity Photo, just work really well on the iPad Pro. And there's even the full version of Photoshop coming in 2019 for people who are used to using Adobe Photoshop. So this is a use case where the iPad Pro is already ready for Pro users. The only thing I think it really struggles with, and I kind of touched on this in the beginning, is file management. So when you load in photos from your iPad Pro, they go into the Photos app first, and then from the Photos app, you have to load them into your favorite photo editing apps. Hopefully with iOS 13, Apple sees a way to directly bypass this and just let us offload our photos directly into the photo app of our choice. Now, some people might not consider this a Pro use situation, but I kind of do, and that's for the student use of the iPad Pro. So this is a great device for students if you're taking it to class every day and you don't have to run specific programs that are found on Mac OS or Windows. It has the smart keyboard folio so you can easily type out essays or type notes in class and you can also switch to handwritten notes with the Apple Pencil. Here's two areas where I want to get a little more expertise in but I haven't really done a lot of work in this area. First I'll just mention I have zero expertise in and that is doing musician stuff and I know the iPad Pro is really, really capable, especially for musicians. A lot of people online are using the iPad Pro to create some really cool beats. And I've just seen the iPad Pro as a really good music creation device, almost from day one, that has been a use that a lot of pros use it for. I just really have zero experience where I can give some confidence talking about it. Now here is an area where I do have some expertise and that is video editing. Of course there's free apps like iMovie and Adobe Rush, but one of the more popular apps is a $20 app called LumaFusion. I've been playing around with LumaFusion. I'm not really a master at it, but so far I'm really liking the performance on the iPad Pro. Everything seems to be really smooth. The way the timeline works reminds me a lot of Final Cut Pro so far, so I'm really liking that. It is a lot more user accessible to someone like me. And this has been one of my critiques of the iPad Pro is that it's not a good device for video editing, 
but I've been recently changing my mind on that subject. After using LumaFusion, after seeing some of the things it can do, and after editing some rough videos on it, nothing I've published yet, I've been pretty impressed with it. I've also been impressed by a couple of videos my good friend Jonathan Morrison put out where he has shown just how amazing the iPad Pro can be at video editing, and he is using LumaFusion. He is doing things in a way that are different than I would normally do on Final Cut Pro, but in his video, his message is that you have to kind of rethink how you want to work in an iPad Pro. It's not the same as working on a desktop. It's not the same as working on a MacBook. I was really blown away by what Jonathan was able to do with LumaFusion in an iPad Pro. He's making better videos than I can using a full $300 application like Final Cut Pro, and he's just doing that on a $20 iPad Pro application. And I can't stress that enough a full featured video editor for $20. And when you think about the pricing of other apps in that area, like Final Cut Pro or Adobe Premiere, you can really see the value in that. Something like Adobe Premiere could cost you around $20 a month, and you're getting that with one single price on the iPad Pro with LumaFusion. Definitely go check out Jonathan's videos. He's been doing a really, really good job of showing just how capable the iPad Pro is in terms of video editing, in terms of music production. He has just been showing just how creative this device can be. I think the main takeaway from all of this is that the iPad Pro does have its limitations. There's things I want to see improved in iOS 13. And the iPad Pro is not a perfect device, but using the iPad Pro is a different experience than using a desktop. Don't expect it to be the same exact experience as using an iMac or using a MacBook Pro. In fact, I've been seeing a lot of comments seeing all we want on an iPad Pro is it for it to run Mac OS, but I think that's really the wrong call. I think the iPad Pro is a unique product. And if you've been using Adobe apps for the past five to 10 years, or even apps like Final Cut Pro, and you go over and try LumaFusion out for the first time, if you try Affinity Photo out for the first time, or even something like Procreate out for the first time, you're not going to have a great understanding of it. And if you don't stick with those applications for a while and learn exactly what they can do, you're going to be disappointed with it and you're going to put it down really quickly. And that's the thing. For a lot of pros, it's a time commitment to learn new applications and a lot of people just aren't willing to put that time investment into learning it. But a lot of new people coming up, a lot of people who have been raised using touch interfaces, who have been raised using phones and iPads are gonna adopt to programs like Affinity Photo, like LumaFusion, like Procreate really quickly. So I think the main point I really wanna make is can the iPad Pro replace your laptop? Yes, for a lot of the tasks and especially the ones I outlined in this video, it can replace your laptop, but only if you're willing to invest the time to learn the new workflows. If the new workflows work for you, if you're fighting the iPad Pro, trying to make it your laptop when you can do things on a MacBook Pro, or an iMac easier. If you don't find the added benefits of the lighter weight, the simplification of iOS, and all of the other features you get with an iPad Pro, then maybe you stick with your laptop. But if you like all of those things, if you're already doing pro tasks on the iPad Pro, don't let anyone put you down by saying you're not doing real work and that it can't replace your laptop because for a lot of people out there, the iPad Pro has replaced their laptop. And you definitely can get a lot of work done on the iPad Pro if you're willing to rethink how the work is done. Okay hey guys, I know this is a controversial topic. I know there's people on both sides of the aisle here, so let's keep it civil in the comments, but let me know in the comments below. Can the iPad Pro replace your laptop? Has it already replaced your laptop? What software limitations are you currently facing with iOS? And what are some features you'd like iOS to borrow from more traditional operating systems like macOS? If you like the video, make sure you give me a like. If you want to see more from my channel, including more iPad Pro coverage, make sure you're subscribed. And as always, guys, I will see you in the next video. Take care, everyone.